first merit award goes to Airflow. Well done, Airflow. Hi, I'm Christina Morris here, and welcome to the 33rd Insight WA Award. And we've just had Startup of the Year announced for this year. It's a really exciting one. And it's one that's going to really interest parents around the world, not just here in Western Australia. And the individual in front of me is the innovator who's put a great deal of thought into a simple solution for what really is a complex and quite a life-changing issue for many kids and families. Dr Intan, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself um, and your background. So how did you get involved in looking after children and children's health and, and ears? So yeah, so I'm, I'm a biomedical engineer by background um, and I think I sort of fell into it to be able to really passionate about helping, making a difference, I guess, you know, like a lot, many people want to, but um, being an engineer and being able to, I guess, create a, a solution mm -hmm. to help patients have a better outcome. Helping children really interests me because I think they're an underserved population. They're often overlooked within the healthcare system. And also families being able to provide this kind of home treatment for them, I think is really important. All right, well, let's let people know what it is that your startup is. I think that would probably be a really great place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about it, so I've jumped one step ahead. So the, the device that you created removes the need for surgery. What's the surgery for? What is this surgery that's so common for young children to undergo? So essentially it's a chronic ear infections and often these kids have, basically they have um, a blockage within their nose and the ear and it's called a eustachian tube. And for normal people, usually you can just open it while swallowing and while you're eating. But in these kids, they can't do that normally. So what happens is that there's all this gunk that kind of builds up inside their middle ear and basically it stops them from hearing. Um, and so they get this kind of muffled noise. They feel like they're underwater and they're not able to essentially hear what their parents are saying or their peers are saying, which is you know, obviously just really, really awful. Um, and so what our device creates is essentially trying to mimic that natural sort of environment that they would um, an, uh, sort of like I guess a child that doesn't have this condition can do. It's a medical device that looks like a sippy cup and essentially you just have to drink from the device but it has an air pump that regulates and opening their eustachian tube over time and draining this kind of gunk that's in the middle ear. So at the moment the hearing. only way to solve a gluey ear um, as parents like to call it. I've got yeah. four kids, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. here's the gluey ear, and I think I've got three of my nephews and nieces who've had to undergo the surgery, which is the only, until you know, your innovation, is the only treatment. Can you just go through that, what that entails for families and the children? Yeah, so usually, I mean, they would have this condition often for many months before they're even referred to an ear, nose and throat surgeon. And usually within that appointment, they'd be booked for a surgery and the surgery involves a general anaesthetic. So the child is, you know, it, they go under and then they have to have an, a plastic tube basically pierced through their eardrum. Um, and then it has to stay there for about six to nine months. And, and what it has to stay dry. Yeah, and it has to stay dry. Which is not easy. <laughs> That's right. In in Australian summer, that you know they have to avoid swimming, which is you know really difficult for the families. Um, and what a lot of people don't know is that often the condition recurs and they have to do it all over again. Um, so uh, yeah. So that's... Uh... Well, I've seen it happen within my own family. And when I saw you come up on stage and I saw what it is that you've done after this startup, I thought... So the company is actually called Earflow. Yeah. So I thought this really will revolutionise the lives of so many families, not just here in Western Australia. Yeah. So how long ago did you have this idea and, and how simple? Was it a simple idea? Well, so I think it's the the way of this, you know, insufflation method, auto inflation of the eustachian tube has been around for a long time. But I think the um, people that have developed technologies in the past are not thinking about the children that needs it. So what we created is really, you know, putting ourselves in the children's shoes and being able to create something that can really be suitable for children, you know, under five years old. That is where this condition is most debilitating. So. It's not rocket science, but it's about being empathetic to what families are going through and about the, the, how the children would, would you know, be able to use that. So as opposed to an operation, we have this simple sippy cup. Tell us how it works and how long you have to use it to actually solve the problem, solve the, the biomechanical problem for the child. 
Yeah, so the device essentially has an air pump and every time the child drinks, the air pump essentially puts air through their nose and opens their, the eustachian tube that, open, that connects to their middle ear. And essentially that can, over time, drains the effusion. We are actually having, um, in a current clinical trial, it's ongoing. And we're already seeing within, um, in some of the patients within two weeks that we can restore their hearing from moderate hearing loss to normal hearing. Um, just using a non-invasive treatment. So it's been really, really exciting to see that for families. How has your startup grown since its inception? Was it 2018 you came up with the idea? Yeah, that's right. So um, at the beginning, it was just um, sort of there's, there's, two co there's three co-founders and myself. Um, and it was a very, very small team, lots of prototyping in our own little shed. Um, and it's now grown to, um, so we've still got a really small team, but we do have a, a large extended team and bring together real experts to I, get it to market. I like how you say you all come together in your own little shed. So at one point in time, you all had your own day jobs yep. and this was the side hustle. Absolutely. How long did it take the side hustle to become something which you know, can sustain you as people as well as provide this great um, opportunity for, for families and kids? Yeah. So I think for, for probably a good three years, it was a real side hustle, literally making prototypes in our little garage. Um, and now I think for over the last sort of two years, we're sort of a little bit more sustainable as a company and being able to obviously get grant funding. And we really want to recognise the support from the WA government and um, Department of Health for a lot of funding. Um, to help our, our startup as well. To actually make this product that you've innovated, how tricky is it? Are you doing it here in Western Australia? What's the long-term plan there? Yeah, so we are currently creating the, our clinical prototypes in Australia, um, in Western Australia, just in Belmont with the Tamo Innovations. Um, we are still developing all of the designs and everything, um, you know, here in WA. It looks like a simpler device, but there is a lot of complexity that's actually hidden to make sure that it's as simple as possible for the user. What did you think this evening when you were announced as the winner, when they said Earflow, startup of the year for 2024? It's absolutely unexpected. To be honest, we were, um, yeah, me and MJ were, you know, absolutely over the moon and that um, there's a recognition for the work that we've done. Um, and I think it's not often that, um, I guess, a startup trying to solve a, an area that's in paediatric is recognised. It's, it's often seen as a, a small market and, you know, not a wide market. So um, obviously we're absolutely ecstatic. I don't know about that because I think I, I know so many families that have got a kid with you know, yeah, yeah. here and they've got the headband around them all summer and it's always, it's, yeah. a, it's a horrible thing to have to go yeah. through. It's, it's a very, very prevalent, uh, prevalent problem. Um, but I think sometimes in paediatric, it's recognised as kind of like, oh, well, they're just going to have to deal with that, which is not okay. You know, our kids need to have the um, the potential to, you know, sort of, I guess, you know, be able to hear and, and thrive in life. And that's what we want to get to. So you mentioned that you're doing testing yep. here in Western Australia. That's so right. what's the next step from that? How big is the test and where do you go to from that? Yeah, so we um, have an ongoing clinical trial that we're doing and we're hoping to complete that by December. But we are at the moment laser focused in developing our device to get through um, regulatory approval or regulatory clearance so that we can have this available for commercialisation and be um, purchased by families. And what path have you gone down? Are you going to try and commercialise it here in Australia or are you looking at a bigger market first? Because I know that's always hard. It's the, it's the, you said the population, the number of people that can potentially utilise it to start with. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a global market. Um, there's no, every children essentially, the, the stats are the same anywhere in the world. So we are, we definitely have eyes on the global market. Um, we are looking at essentially, of, of course, Australia is, is a good sort of first market that we can, we would like to tackle. So we want to have that um, available for families in Australia, but also the US and, and eventually the Europe, European market. Have you had any larger sort of global pharmaceutical companies looking at what you're doing? Um, we. We certainly have eyes on that. There are a lot of potentials that the device can have and um, maybe not everything I can disclose, but there's, there's a lot of potential being able to deliver drugs into the, the nasal cavity and that sort of stuff. So um, there's certainly opportunities there. Do you have kids of your own? I do have two young boys. And have they ever had the issue with the ears? Well, interesting th interestingly, they haven't, but okay. probably because we've actually been trialling the device on <laughs> our own kids for many years. And, and, and maybe, yeah, yeah, we, we don't, that's right. But um, 
They're our first little guinea pigs and we want to make sure that they work on our two little brats at home first before they deploy them on to, you know, other people. No, they, they could have, they, I think that's a good thing. It's work, that's okay. Yeah. We take that as parents. All right, so future vision is world domination. Yes, absolutely. You'd still like to manufacture it here in Western Australia? Yeah, we can certainly try, yeah. Okay, and as I suppose Mr. Minister Dawson is very big on this. He's very big on giving startups a startup, but he wants you to stand up as well. How long do you think until Earflow will stand Stand up for itself. How long till it will be able to look after itself financially? I think we're hoping that by next year we can be sustainable. Um, we can have, we can get, you know, sort of private investment to sustain our company and be able to, as you said, um, you know, move towards global domination. Just in, put in, in front this of market. other parents who've had their kids have had the glue a year and had the two or three sets of grommets. You probably. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think in a clinical trial where, you know, obviously it's a clinical trial and the device have to be returned, but there's been so many families that, can I just keep this because it's really helping my kids? And it's, you know, it breaks a heart because, you know, and, that, and that's why we, we're like, we need to get this to market yeah. so that these families can actually have this at home. Well, congratulations. I hope you put the award up with pride at the front of the office there and we look forward to seeing what happens in the future, Dr. Intern. Yeah, thank you so much.